This is the Design Materials channel, and I am Edson Mafus, architect and professor of architectural design at the School of Architecture, Federal University of Rio Grande do Sul, Porto Alegre, Brazil. I'm back with another video on architectural design, this time to talk about the work of Oscar Niemeyer, perhaps the best known of Brazilian architects. Oscar Niemeyer started his career in the 1940s with works of great quality, which helped the fledgling modern Brazilian architecture to be known and admired abroad. From the Pampulha buildings in Minas Gerais to the palaces of Brasilia, Niemeyer consolidated his version of modern architecture and gained admirers and followers everywhere. At Pampulha, four magnificent buildings demonstrate the versatility of the architect, capable of designing in several different modes. At the Ibirapuera Park, the big surprise of finding a vibrant space inside a building that is somewhat bland when viewed from the outside. And in Brasilia, countless variations around the theme of the modern palace. At the same time that he is undoubtedly the most famous of Brazilian architects, Oscar Niemeyer's work remains surrounded by mystery and myths. One is that he was not influenced by any architectural references and that, starting from scratch time and again, his creations were always original in the sense of being new, never seen before. The architect himself fed these myths by not explaining how he designed and endorsed the myth that architecture is not learned. You are born an architect. When he explained something, he only mentioned non-architectural references, a difficult path to follow as it cannot be systematized and taught. This attitude was harmful for teaching and consequently for the practice of architecture in Brazil because for many decades our architects adopted the same attitude of not being interested in the architecture of the past or that of their contemporaries unless it was designed by Nehemiah and his group and sought for each project the originality that they supposed to be the mark of their idol. The result of this can be seen in any Brazilian city where an average architecture of very low quality predominates, unlike what happens in our neighbors Uruguay and Argentina. When one aspires to be a genius without being so, there is a high risk of producing architectural monsters. But first, let's deal with influences. It is obvious that Le Corbusier was the first and strongest influence, to whom Niemeyer was directly exposed when the project of the Ministry of Education and Health was on its way in the 1930s, since the French-Swiss architect acted as a consultant to the Brazilian team, of which Niemeyer was part as a trainee. It is enough to examine his first projects to see the presence of the domino scheme and other projects by Le Corbusier as Niemeyer's starting point. For example, Le Corbusier's Palace of the Soviets project served as a starting point for various work, works by Niemeyer. This practice is not a problem in any way as all architects do this, and not only at the beginning of their careers, as the work of someone as important as Arne Jacobsen proves. 
If Le Corbusier is a somewhat obvious reference, as much is known of his relations with the beginning of modern Brazilian architecture, another possible influence barely acknowledged in Brazil would be that of Mies van der Rohe, who, in addition to being known worldwide, was one of the main exhibitors at the São Paulo Biennale of 1953-54. If we compare the culminating building of Miss van der Rohe's career, the National Gallery, with some of the institutional buildings that Niemeyer built in Brasilia, we will only find affinities at the typological level, not at the level of external appearance. Perhaps the fact that the buildings are not alike explains why very few have realized this relationship. But going back to the comparison, it is interesting to know that all of these buildings correspond to the same abstract description. Overall prismatic shape, flat roof, interior space set back in relation to the roof projection and limited by glass planes, peripheral pillars of unique shape. The National Gallery is from 1962, but the project that gave rise to the type is from 1957, the Bacardi building in Cuba. Another myth adhered to Niemeyer's work is that he did not have a method of design and acted only from intuition and his artistic ability. I do not think this is true. In my opinion, Oscar Niemeyer had a very clear design method, which I intend to demonstrate next. This is the most important point of this video, as it reveals what I think is Niemeyer's design method. There are two compositional strategies that alternate, organized, organizing an almost fixed repertoire of elements. The term almost reveals the fact that, over time, little by little, new elements were added to the repertoire and existing ones were refined and transformed. And what's very important, what varied in each project were the elements used and the relationships between them. Understanding this method allows us to learn from Niemeyer's work and to go beyond the mere admiration of his formal prowess. The first aspect of this method is the presence of two compositional strategies. Subtractive composition, also known as uh, the compact or monolithic partie, and additive composition, also known as composition by parts or elementary composition, both inherited from the architecture of past centuries. In subtractive composition, the starting point is always an elementary shape, a prism with a rectangular base, a cylinder, a cube, a pyramid, etc., regardless of the elaboration they go through during the design process. The other strategy, that of additive composition, also called elementary composition according to Rainer Bannon, who relates it with the Beaux-Arts practices of the 19th century. Additive composition can appear at the scale of the building, of the sole building, or on a larger scale close to that of urban design. Additive composition at the building scale consists of at least two volumetrically recognizable components. In many cases, these components coincide with important parts of the functional program. In additive composition of large groups, a number of buildings are distributed over a large area of 
of land, always having some element that connects them, a marquee, a paved area, etc. Like, for instance, in the famous Ibarapuera Park, in which very common linear elements are connected by this gigantic marquee, which is what people remember when visits this building. Uh, it's very memorable, it's huge, many things happen under it, and it's uh, a, a very uh, uncommon element because of its size and extension. And here, the second part of the method, of Niemeyer's method, which is the repertoire, which keeps coming back and being reused throughout his career. Not in a hierarchical way. The first one is the rectilinear or curved block. In general, longer than then it is high. That is, the, the horizontal dimension is in general uh, larger than the vertical dimension. The tower, which can appear isolated, multiplied, or even divided into composing parts, like in the National Congress in Brasilia the low circular building the organic marquee organic goes goes like this quoted because of course it's not organic it's something built but since it in general is curved uh, a form which is attained by combining uh, rectilinear, rectilinear lines and curves, we end up calling it the organic element or the organic marquee. And the the organic marquees in Nehemiah's work go from small ones, like in the Pampulia Ballroom on the left, to very, very big ones, like the one in Ibirapuera Park. And depending on the project, it could be raised and even include, include internal space, as you can see here at the CESP project for Sao Paulo. Then we have the, the platform, which can be treated as a carpet, as a kind of bidimensional surface that connects elements, very much like the carpets we have in, in one's house, in which we have the sofa and a couple of armchairs related by that, that rug, huh? more a rug than a carpet. In the case of Nehemiah's building, it's a, a big paved area that connects on, on the left image, uh, a round low building with uh, one of those shells, concrete shells, and a tower and a, a linear building. The, the second variation would be when this platform is inhabitable. It gains uh, depth and can include a couple of stories inside. In the case of the Congress in Brasilia, uh, Many things happen inside this raised platform. The freeform shells, which started very early in Nehemiah's career at the Pampulia Chapel on the left, and appeared in almost all of his projects until the end. The so-called domed buildings, which could be uh, a section of a sphere, like the ones we see here on the left at the bottom of the picture, or they could be a, 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 a shape that is the result of a, the revolution of a curve 
around a, a central vertical axis. And this week we could see in the same picture, but on the, on the top part and on the right in this mosque project for, for Ar Argel. And the last element in this series is the so-called beam building, which is a, a building in which we see a, a structure, an external structure, from which hangs the building proper. In general, a, a glass box sustained by, by elements that hang from the top beams and also generally liberate the ground floor for uh, outside activities. In some cases, not only the, the, the bottom floor is free of anything, but also the, the floor that is between the box and the, the beams, as one can see at the Mondadori Press HQ in Milan. Having identified Niemeyer's design method, it seems important to comment that at some point in the 1970s, the architect's interest seems to be, or seems to concentrate on only on the sculptural aspect of his projects and in doing things no one has done before. This is important because Niemeyer is a mythical figure who exercised and still exerts influence over several generations of architects. Interestingly, interestingly, the shift toward spectacular architecture contradicts a life of communist activism and an emphasis on solidarity. Such a change of direction was already clear in the projects of the 1980s and 1990s, but the architect himself practically acknowledges it when, in an interview published in the Brazilian magazine Veja at the turn of the century, he declares that the aim of his architecture was to astonish people. When this is the goal of architecture, most of the profession's legacy accumulated over many centuries loses its meaning. In projects carried out in the last two decades of the 20th century, Niemeyer's design method is present. The same strategies and elements, but problems already outweigh the virtues. The Latin America Memorial Project is a work with many problems. Poor relationship with the surroundings, lack of comfort and energy efficiency, open space without qualification, and search, search for meaningless structural feats. For example, is there a real need for a library to have a 60 meter column free span apart from the architect's wish to break records? One of his latest works, a cultural ensemble next to Brasilia's cathedral, is characterized by an open space that is nothing more than thousands of square meters of cement without any articulation or surface design, a traditional feature of Brazilian squares, without vegetation or shade. It is difficult to imagine anyone spending a pleasant time in this inhospitable place, especially considering the dry climate of Brasilia. Finally, an administrative center in which Niemeyer's design method mentioned above is confirmed. The beam building and the linear buildings are there, but it also reaffirms the new concern in not allowing anything to interfere with the appreciation of buildings displayed as large sculptures. In a peripheral site, Without any spatial definition, the buildings are isolated objects that do not generate positive space, that is, non-residual space. At the end of this video, it, it is important to reaffirm the importance of Niemeyer for architecture as a discipline. However, the myth 
that was created around his name and his work does not help him at all, besides the fact that it does not correspond to the facts. As Carlos Martiaris stated more than once, when one wants to know architecture, one must go to projects and build works, because they do reveal the truth. And the projects clearly indicate that Oscar Niemeyer was influenced by other architects, at least at the beginning of his long career, and that he designed in a systematic and evolutionary way, from a repertoire that was slowly refined and evolved. Only by understanding this can we learn from his work and put aside the myth that the architect, anyone, not just Nehemiah, is an enlightened being who is born ready. Moreover, to maintain the myth is to trick thousands of students into believing that architecture cannot be learned and is a thing for geniuses. Thank you very much for watching one more video. I hope you come back for more and if you can, subscribe to the channel.